Well, first of all, let me say that I think the terminology cultural diplomacy is not well understood. It is a term that I had not heard, and I spent some 12 years in the Senate to travel widely abroad and have since I left the Senate uh, in 2001. So I think it needs a definition that people can understand it. What I have come to understand is you're trying to build cultural bridges uh, to various cultures around the world to promote understanding that by so doing it is in the self-interest of America and other countries because that would enhance national security, perhaps avoid some of the conflicts that we've had based upon cultural differences and misunderstanding, and also might provide a basis for more economic uh, security as well. Well, I, I think that's true. I mean, when you uh, take a uh, survey of public opinions nationally, uh, those views tend to be very moderate. Let me cite an example that's been very divisive with respect to immigration. Most Americans believe that comprehensive immigration reform is something we do. Because of the way the political structure is organized, uh, congressional districts in America have been so gerrymandered so that in most congressional districts, I mean, they're either Republican or Democrat. And the concern, particularly, that Republicans have that there are people that are further to the right of them politically that will defeat them. Eric Cantor, the defeat of the majority leader, is an example of that. And to some extent, the same concerns on the right. So those forces tend to make it more difficult to come together because there are political risks involved. And yet the American people do not, by and large, identify with the folks who are on the fringe of either of the American major political parties, Democrat or Republican. Well, I think the one thing it can do is to kind of explain, you know, the cultural differences and how much we have in common. You know, there is a tendency to think, wait a minute, those folks are different. They don't really share our values. I think an exchange of those values so that my sense is that most uh, immigrants historically have, you know, Look, I want opportunity for my, my family. I want to be able to do better economically, uh, that I want to have uh, the ability to enjoy a life where, you know, I am free from, you know, threats uh, of, of violence and, and the sorts of things that are kind of universal. I think all of us share those things, but those differences sometimes divide us because we're really is not the kind of an understanding that, hey, look, we're all kind of here on the planet. Most of us kind of share those views. Well, I, I think the, the generic term is not as helpful to those that have not spent the time as I was privileged to do today to identify programs. We support A, B, and C because we believe that advances the cause of cultural diplomacy rather than spending a lot of time defining what cultural diplomacy is. I don't think that is terribly useful. It seems to me that your focus should be to support those programs which have some resonance, you know, whether it's uh, more in the way of supporting diplomatic missions, more in the way of supporting Peace Corps type of uh, involvement, other kinds of things that help to bridge the cultural gaps that exist. That, I think, is more effective than rather trying to explain. In other words, in American politics, if you can't explain something in 30 seconds, forget it. You can't do that on TV. Yeah. So a program that specifically, you know, I support the Peace Corps because, and that I respectfully suggest the Peace Corps and other such programs that exist in America and are supported by most Americans would be helpful to advance the cause of uh, uh, cultural diplomacy.